Hey guys, let's dive into Hammers and Waves by Skybox Audio. This is a really special contact library. Well, in fact, it's four different libraries that includes 10 instruments. And what's special about this one is the fact that they used robotic device to sample all these instruments, which means no human suffered playing all these different keys in different velocities. It's all sampled by the robot. So in this video, I'm going to show you as quickly as I can what is Hammer and Waves and how it works, what's included, how it sounds. Let's get started. Right, so don't let this simple user interface confuse you because under the hood there's a lot of things going on. So first of all, here we can see that we have three different sources, sound sources. We have swarm, we have source, we have fractals. So the source is the source sound, that's the samples. Then we have swarm, which is a granular synthesizer or synthesis engine. And then we have fractals, which is an arpeggiator and sequencer. And we'll see that, of course, soon. We also have modulations that's under mode and we have space, which is a combination of delay and reverb. So now let's dive into source. We have on the top all the controls for the sound. First, we have the close and far miking. Then we have color, which will give us more of a bright or darker sound. And I'm going to just remove the swarm. I'm going to remove the fractals and we can just listen to the source. Then we have shift. So the shift will give us different kind of flavors by applying uh, low pass and high pass filters. So let's see how that works. Very cool. And then we have shape, which will shape the release. So if you go all the way to the right, that will be a longer release. And if you go to the left, that will be sort of a staccato sound. Now we all also have too much reverb here, so I'm going to just reduce that. And now let's listen. And we also have octaves. So we have minus 24 to plus 24 semitones. Let's go back to normal here. Next, we have the velocity curve here in the middle and we can shape this. And we also have the minimum and maximum uh, velocities. But now we get to the interesting part of source. So we have realism on the left, we have hyperrealism on the right. So the realism will give us a lot of added functions and character to the sound. We have the note, that's the actual note played. Then we have the release sound. We have the sympathetic resonance. We have the sound of the hammers, the pedal, the damper. So all of that will give us a very, uh, I would say natural and very believable sound. That's realism. And then we have the hyperrealism, which will give us a lot of character to the sound, some added sound. So first we have the pre-strike, which is unique to this library. I didn't see it anywhere else. Let me know in the comments if uh, you, you know about any other libraries that have the pre-strike. And just note that you, you will introduce a bit of a delay somewhere around 200 milliseconds. So watch out for that. And that's the pre-strike. Uh, pre and then we also have the strike. So this will give us sort of a, a, 
strike right at the uh, at the beginning but it's not just a simple attack sound it's also sampled so what we have is a choice of different sounds let's uh, let's just select something let's go for um, I'll take glass and we'll get the volume up and we also have a filter And let's try something else. Broom. Very cool. Next, we also have the sub. So the sub is adding a sub layer, sub frequencies, uh, but we can add punch to this. We have the volume and we can direct that uh, to the output instead to the source output, which means that it will bypass the space and mode that you apply uh, on the, this uh, sample. So you will retain, you will have that sub layer unaffected by those effects. Next, we also have noise. So you can turn it off, on, and you can uh, just try out different noises. Right now we have gate on, which means that it will play only when we actually play notes. So I'm going to turn it off and let's select something. And that's the idea here of the gate. And again, we have direct out. That's the same, uh, just bypassing the uh, usual route of the sound from source. So that is source. I think what we can do now is just select a different preset so we can play with more sounds. Let's try something else. And so by the way, we can see that we have a different instrument here. And this is a good time for me to show you something about this library. So first we have the library here in the complete control. You can see that we actually have four libraries. When you install this, you'll get the Hammer and Waves Acoustic, we have Chime, we have Electric, we have the Prepared, and all of them together will give you 10 different instruments. So let me show you how that works. So once you select this library, for example, you see that we have a drop down, and here we have a choice of three different instruments. We have the Modern Ground, we have Relic Upright, and we have the UX Upright. And if we select something else, let's go for the electric. You'll see that we have different banks. Now we have EP200A and we have the suitcase 73. So let's try that one and see what we get. All right, so the difference between the acoustic and the electric is in one uh, particular area here in the source where we have DI and amp. So if you click this, you'll see that we have an amplifier and we have a cabinet and we also can choose the different uh, mic, I mean different mics that we have here and that will give us different sounds of course. And we can select close or far, we can select different cabinets here. And so that's the main difference. Let's go back here and let's see what do we get with the swarm. So I'm going to the swarm here and you'll see that we have an XY pad, which you can move manually, but we can automate that here with the color and the shift. And now let's play. And we have different textures as we move this ball. Let add, let's add some width and intensity, and we can add octaves. And we also have an ADSR envelope here. So we can add sustain. So that's 
the swarm. And now let's jump over to fractals here. And here we have the design area and then we have animation. So in the design, we have the rate and let's turn it on way too much. And turn the rate to one sixteenth. We also have strike, so we click this and we get the strike and you can see that we have on the top here source and fractals. So uh, this will give us a quick jump to uh, the strike area for the uh, source or the fractals. And that's the idea here. Let's go back to our fractals and we also have the animation here. Let's turn it on and let's get some color and the shift. And that's the basic idea. So we're going to listen to more example later. Let's go back to the main view here and again, see what we have. So we covered so far, we have the swarm source and fractals. These are the sound sources. Then we also have the ability to introduce some effect. So let me show you how that works. So if you go to source, you'll see on the right here that we have FX, we have the delay and reverb. These are the global delay and reverbs. And if you click this, you'll see that we have slots. So we have four slots for each of the sound layers. We have swarm, source and fractals. And for each one, we can have four different effects. So I, I can add a delay here. Of course, we can turn it on and off. And I can jump over to Swarm and add something here. For example, let's add a reverb. And I can go to Fractals, which we, we don't have any, uh, any effects here. So I'm going to select Delay. And we can change this to Diffusion. And by the way, the delay is the replica delay by Native Instruments. Going back, so this this is uh, basically the effects. It's very easy to navigate and very easy to configure. And we also have modulations. So let me show you how that works. We go to modulations here and we have three uh, modulation uh, destinations. So we have the volume, we have pan and we have pitch. And for each one, we can select the uh, just different uh, waveforms. Let's get sign here. Let's get triangle here and we can set the rate. And then for each of the layers, again, source, swarm and fractals, we can set the amount of modulation. Very cool. So next, and we're almost done here. This is great. So I'm going to show you something really cool. And before that, of course, if you like this video so far, hit the like button and let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if I missed anything or you just want to say hello. And so now I'm going to show you something cool. If you click the top here, you'll see that we have sort of uh, extra settings. And for Swarm, the source, and for the fractals, we can set different uh, modulations by, for example, the pitch bend or the mod wheel or MIDI learn and so on, even after touch. So let me show you how that works. So right now I, I can just use this uh, pitch bend and you can see that I'm controlling the source volume here. 
and I can do this also by uh, just using the mod wheel. So I'm going to the source and instead of uh, the pitch band, I'm going to select the mod wheel. And now you can see how that works. And I can turn it on. And this, this is the way to do it. So now if I want to do the same for the fractals, I can, uh, for example, add the uh, space reverb. And again, with the mod wheel, so I'm going to do this and right now you see that I'm controlling this space here. So that's very, very cool, very easy assignment of modulations and very, very uh, easy to understand user interface. I really like it. So going back now, what I think we should do now is get a lot of sound demos. So I'm going to just flick through different presets and uh, that will be the end of this video. So let me know in the comments if, uh, if uh, again, if there's anything that I've missed and if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and bye bye. Thank you.